Today's topic is do you even have a zone two? Uh, over the past year or so in the health and fitness industry, it's become hugely popular, something James and I have been talking about for a long, long time, but it's made its way into the mainstream. Obviously, really important for health and longevity. James, do you want to just explain what is zone two briefly in case people don't know? Well, I think the best way to think about it is it's just like the, the training zone, the lowest point lowest type of training zone you can do i.e it's meant to be quite easy it's like what we're mm. in terms of the science bit it's training below your aerobic threshold where aerobic th sub aerobic threshold primarily uses fat as the main source of fuel for training so it's meant to be an easy recovery zone where it's yep. really good for endurance athletes to help them build their aerobic base to help them go faster for longer and more efficiently i think that's a very simple way to put it so you're working about 67% of your maximum heart rate, sometimes even lower, but it's a very easy level of training where you can hold a conversation and keep on going for as long as you want to. It's, it's that easy, basically. Yeah, as you say, conversational pace is probably a really, really the, the simplest way um, to, to, to put it. I think if you want to go even more technical, because this, this, uh, this topic came from a video I watched on YouTube called Shervin Shares, uh, which we're going to share in the show notes as well. Um, and the sort of the father of zone two training, as he defines it, is a guy called Inigo Sam Milan. I hope that's how you pronounce it. And technically, he defines it as between having 1.7 to 1.9 millimoles of lactate in your blood. Uh, that is incredibly complicated. So conversational, that's much easier way to <laughs> <laughs> to put it, isn't it? Um, in terms of sort of the way we do it, the Maffetone method is what we use. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so like I'd, I'd go back and say, I'd say Phil Maffetone is the godfather of zone yeah. two before even zones were a thing right back in the day. Yeah. And this is where we got the math method from then, where he uses a way of training sub aerobic threshold, which is using your heart rate. So it's 180 minus your age plus or minus five, depending on your training age, ability, and if you're, if you're sick, status. basically. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got all those levels. That's, they started from there. So I think the two of them together are, are really fascinating. I can't pronounce his name properly, but I'm, it is, <laughs> he is the for, at the forefront of zone two training at the moment in terms of health and research and science. That's why he was on uh, Peter Atiyah's podcast. And he has been yeah. quite a lot. And he works with some of the highest level athletes in the world on Tour de France and cycling so he is a fascinating guy cycling isn't it he does a lot of work with cyclists yeah yeah so many athletes it's, it's great just li looking at his stuff on Twitter actually because he shares some wonderful stuff and it's fascinating to see it so yeah so yeah these guys are absolutely experts but these guys have access to labs most of the time and we don't so how do you make it practical and then when he shared this video and like showing how this guy wanted to learn all about zone two and wanted to train zone two and then, like, I, I, you know, I'll let you, I'll set, let you say the punchline, but what was his conclusion at the end of that video, Josh? Well, it, it was really interesting. So this is why it sparked my interest, is because he said, you know, that the title is I tried Zone 2 training for, for, two, for three months. Um, he had a lot of testing to do. He went to a, a lab to, you know, define his Zone 2 very specifically. So they were looking at lactate. It's very technical. He had blood work done, and he had a DEXA scan to get his fat mass and lean body mass and stuff all so he had you know so he could compare how it changed over those three months and what i found absolutely fascinating and it's not something i had ever considered before is that he didn't have a zone two so not just like he wasn't physically able to to train there metabolically he didn't have a zone two and that's in the simplest sense um he was burning he, carbohydrates all the way through and there wasn't really any point where he was really u utilizing a lot more fat than, than carbohydrate and essentially that metabolically that's how you define your zone two you should be majority burning fat and not burning carbs and he really didn't have a zone where this was the case um, and it really made me think of our clients over the years who've you know perhaps been struggling with math training they've struggled to they've found it difficult they've struggled to keep their heart rate down and it's not something that i ever considered to think well metabolically do they have a zone two because i just thought okay well if you're if you're walking if you're slow doing a bit of walk jog or whatever then yeah your body's just gonna you know it knows what to do it, it's gonna burn more fat but 
that seems to be that that is not necessarily the case. I know. It, I, 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 that's the thing I found fascinating as well. It explains why people struggle so much and they hate it so much or they get really frustrated with it because they do. They get really frustrated with it because it's not what they're used to. And the guy in the video, Sherman Chairs, look, he looks fit on the, on the front of it. He looks really fit and healthy. He looks buff. He looks like he works out. Yeah, he works out. He trained. He did, obviously, he did more strength and more high intensity training. Uh, he hadn't really done zone two at all, which then when you look at it from that point of view, is that, well, that makes perfect sense why he doesn't have a zone two. But I just never thought mm, that that would be possible from a metabolic standpoint. We always think of it in terms of strength. Like if you don't train for muscular endurance, you won't have it. If you don't train for hypertrophy, you won't have it. If you don't train high intensity, you'll struggle with it. I never thought about it from an aerobic point of view. Mm. And it's, but it's, but it shows he took for three months, so it's a long period of training to change your whole dynamic to training as well. It's you've got to think about this. So we've always known it's been a long process to get people ready to where we want to get to. But now you throw this into the equation where they probably haven't got any because they're just literally they've never trained it before. And I know a lot of people who've never trained it before and they struggle with it. And they try and do it, they get frustrated, they give up. So yeah, I just think I think it's just a great video to share and an insight into the mindset and now to show some data behind it too from the lab to show that yeah this doesn't exist i think it's great so we're all for zone two the whole world is for zone two right now in terms of training everyone's for zone two now <laughs> everyone's for zone two now we've been saying it for years banging your head against a brick wall half the time but now everyone's saying it which is great you know maybe maybe our banging your head against the wall and sharing this with the world has helped in some respect but i think it's not because we haven't covered enough but it's great that people are talking about it. It's great that we're now seeing this. But obviously, the more and more research that comes out and more anecdotal stories like this, the better, I think. Because I think that's what we need to get the message out there, that zone two or your sub-aerobic threshold training is vitally important for your health, longevity, and more importantly, your performance to allow you to recover faster. Yeah, exactly. As you say, health and recovery are hugely important. And what Obviously, you're not going to go and get people aren't going to go and get tests in laboratories. So it's like, okay, well, how do they work out their zone two then? And math is probably still the best best method. After watching this video, although his didn't correlate exactly, his math calculation wasn't too far off. So it put him um, taking the test into account. It put him at about hundred between hundred and thirty six and one hundred and forty two. And I believe his math would have been around just under 150 so not too far off at the top end of, of where it was calculated for him he did he had to do a lot of walk jog a heck of a lot of walk jog to keep in the right zone um which obviously is what we recommend for people so what i would say is if you are doing zone two training and you're struggling try not to get frustrated because it's not your fault <laughs> it does take time um to develop uh, an actual aerobic threshold to develop a zone two yep Exactly. So a fascinating story. And we'll leave the video in the show notes down below. And we'll also leave it on the website too, so you can have a watch of it to just watch the video and, and yeah, just take it in from what we saw it. So I think it's a great video to learn from and just talk about it, to share this awareness about Zone 2, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. And we highly recommend everyone do some Zone 2 training and, and let us know, you know, feedback to us, let us know how it goes. Uh, that is it for today. Please don't forget to rate, review and subscribe. And if you want to find out more about our system of training, go to strengthmatters.com forward slash system.